Hi guys, um, today we're going to be looking at using a least common denominator or common denominator to add and subtract fractions, right? So we're basically going to be doing the same thing we were working on yesterday, but today we're not going to have, um, we're not going to use fraction strips. We're going to use numbers only, All right? So the first and um, the Basset Hounds say hello as well. All right. So the first thing, sorry about that, my um, tools weren't working. So the first way we're going to look at um, adding and subtracting fractions, again, with unlike denominators, so I have 3 eighths plus 1 half. I have to have um, those denominators be the same. So the first thing I can do is use a common denominator. Um, to find just a common denominator, what I can do is I can just multiply the two denominators together. So if I did that, I'd be multiplying 8 times 2. That's going to give me my new, new denominator. So 8 times 2 is 16. Remember to find equivalent fractions. If I, how did I get from 8 to 16? I multiplied by 2. So what do I have to do to my top number? Multiply by 2. So e my fraction that's going to be equivalent to 3 eighths is going to be 3 times 2 is 6, so 6 sixteenths. And again, down here, my new denominator is going to be 16. How did I get from 2 to 16? Multiplied by 8. So I have to multiply by 8 on the top, so I'm going to have 8 sixteenths. And it looks like I'm finding the sum so I'm going to add 6 plus 8. 6 plus 8 gives me 14. And again, now my denominators are the same. So I can just keep that same denominator. So I'm going to have 14 sixteenths. All right. Now here, usually what happens when I just use a common denominator I'm probably going to have to simplify my fraction to get it into simplest form. So that's what step four is. I have to write in simplest form. So to find simplest form, I need to find my GCF. So what is the greatest common factor between um, 14 and 16? So the greatest common factor between 14 and 16, I believe, is going to be 2. So I'm not going to take the time right now to write out my factors of 14 and 16. We've been doing this now for a while. So it would be like 1 and 14, 2 and 7, 1, 16, 2, and 8. Biggest number in common, 2. Once I find that, I divide my numerator and denominator by that. So I'm going to find that my answer should be 7 eighths. Final answer, 7 eighths. Okay, so that's one way. There we just used a common denominator. Common denominator is 16. Now, my other option is to use the least common denominator. So to find the least common denominator, Remember, we're going to write out the multiples of 2 and 8. Okay, so again, this is a skill that we've now been doing for 2 to 3 weeks, right? So I'm going to write out my multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, multiples of 8, 8, 16, and I already have one that's going to be in common, I think. I'm looking, least common denominator, I'm looking for the smallest number. My smallest number in common is going to be 8. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at 3 eighths then. Is anything really going to change with 3 eighths? If 8 is my least common denominator, how did I get from 8 to 8? Multiplied by 1. So I don't have to change anything. 3 eighths stays the same. 1 half, new denominator is 8. How did I get from 2 to 8? multiplied by 4. So what do I have to do to the top? You got it. I got to multiply by 4. So my final answer here, again, now notice, 
I used my least common denominator, so my denominator is 8. My denominator is 8. So now all I have left to do is add my numerators. 3 plus 4 is 7. Denominator stays the same with 8. So it looks like I got an answer of 7 eighths for my final answer. Now, hot diggity, what do we see that's in common here? 7 eighths and 7 eighths. I got the same answer. So I can get the same answer by using a common denominator or by using a least common denominator. Least common denominator, I don't have any work to do um, in the back end. I know that it's going to be in simplest form. Always have to write my answer in simplest form. Alright, let's do a couple together and then you're going to try some um, on your own and then we'll be ready for bell work tomorrow. So let's uh, rock through these. Alright, so <clears throat> again, I need to find my least... I'm going to choose to to find... actually, let's do this. For number one, we're just going to use a common denominator. So the easiest way to find a common denominator would be if I multiplied 5 and 3 together. So 5 times 3 is 15. So I know that my common denominator is going to be 15. Um, how did I get from 5 to 15? I multiplied by 3. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the... You got it, have to do it to the top. So 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, let's see, how did I get from 3 to 15? Well, I multiplied by 5. We know that because we multiplied them together. So whatever I do to the bottom, again, have to do the top. So now I'm going to have um, 15 is my denominator still. And I'm going to have 9 plus 5 is 14. So I have um, 14 fifteenths as an answer. 14 and 15 don't have any factors that are in common. So 14 fifteenths is going to be my final answer. Okay? I think it's going to end up if we um, would actually find the least common denominator for 5 and for 3. Sorry, just had to uh, tell the Basset Hounds that they were being bad students, so I apologize if you heard barking dogs in the background. Alright, so again, if I list out my multiples for 5, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So I can see that actually in this case my least common multiple is actually going to be 15. Alright, let's do um, 7 eighths and 1 fourth. Um, so this time um, I'm going to find my least common denominator. So if I list out my multiples for 4 and 8, I'm going to have 4, 8, 8. So I can see that 8 is going to be my LCD. So 7 eighths already has the denominator of 8, so I don't have to do anything to it. Um, so 1 fourth, what am I going to change 1 fourth into? Well, how did I get from 4 to 8? have to multiply by 2. Notice that's my second multiple there. So on the top, I have to multiply by 2. So now my problem it has changed into 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. So I'm going to have an answer of 5 eighths. 5 eighths is simplest form. There's no um, common factors between 5 and 8 besides 1. All right. Um, so if I was to do this problem um, with just multiplying uh, to find a common denominator, I'd have 32. So if I had a common denominator of 32, I'm going to end up having to reduce. So again, up to you. Option 1, we um, multiply the two numbers together. That's finding a common denominator. Option 2, we found the least common denominator um, and then solved. Alright, so you're going to do number 2 and number 6. So go ahead and hit pause and then um, we'll come back and share our answers. Alrighty, here's our answers. Number 1, um, I, I'm sorry, 
we just did number one and number five. Huh. Number two on the U try, um, my I found my least common denominator. Least common denominator I found was ten, so I'm going to end up having five tenths plus four tenths, and I end up with a final answer of nine tenths. All right. Um, least common denominator for number six is going to be twelve. So three fourths, my equivalent fraction is going to be nine twelfths minus two thirds turns into eight twelfths. And here I have how I got um, my new numerators. So I have nine twelfths minus eight twelfths is equal to one twelfth. So hopefully you rocked out on those and we will. Oh, hey, we've got some more practice problems to do together. Awesome. So I won't see you tomorrow yet. Um, all right, here we're going to do these together. One-fourth and um, one-sixth. I'm going to add those together. So again, I'm going to find my least common denominator. So four and six, if I write out my multiples, I have four, eight, twelve, six, and twelve. So my LCD is actually going to be twelve here. So I'm making an equivalent fraction to 1 fourth, but I'm going to have a, a denominator of 12. So if I multiply by 3, because how did I get from 4 to 12? I multiplied by 3, so I have to do that to the top. So I'm going to have 3 twelfths plus, how did I get from 6 to 12? Multiplied by 2. So I have to multiply by 2 on the top. And now all I have to do is add. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 4, 5, 12 as my final answer. And 5 and 12 don't have any factors in common, so I know that that's simplest form. All right, let's look down here. Now, we should hopefully maybe start to be getting to a point where we can start to mentally um, run off our multiples. So I'm going to start to know off the top of my head that my multiples of 5... Um, are going to intersect with 10 pretty quickly. So my um, least common multiple here, or least common denominator, is going to be 10. So 9 tenths, I don't have to change anything. It's going to be 9 tenths. The denominator is already 10. 4 fifths is going to turn into, multiply by 2, 4 times 2 is 8. It's going to turn into 8 tenths. 9 minus 8 is 1 over 10. 1 tenth final answer. So again, I chose to just go ahead and find the least common denominator. So when I find the least common denominator, I don't have to simplify at the end. All right, now you're going to try these two. We'll go over those answers, and then I will see you tomorrow. So go ahead and hit pause, and we'll see you in just a second. All right, let's see how we did here. Um, I'm going to find my least common denominator here to be 20. So my equivalent fraction for 1 fifth is going to be 4 twentieths. I'm going to add um, equivalent fraction for 3 fourths is 15 twentieths. And I end up with a final answer of 19 twentieths. Okay, so that one would have worked out. I could multiply them. If I just multiplied them together, that's going to be my least common denominator. Um, down here I've showed you um, two different ways. I did, the first way I did it was to find the least common denominator, which is going to be 18. So um, I changed 8 ninths into 16 eighteenths. Um, 5 sixths into 15 eighteenths, then I subtracted and I'm already in simplest form with 1 eighth. Other option, um, if we did not find the least common denominator and I just multiplied 9 and 6, I'd get 54. So then I'd have to multiply by 8 by 6, I'd get 48. Um, and then I'd do 9 times 5 is 45. And when I subtract that, I would get 3 54ths. Now, 3 54ths is not in simplest form. My directions say right in simplest form. So now I have to find the GCF. Greatest common factor between 3 and 54 is 3. So when I reduce that, I get 1 18th. So either way, I get an answer of 1 18th. Okay? Tomorrow we'll do 16.4 bell work, and we will see you then. Thanks for watching.